Hello, I'm Dr. Sugar, your internet doctor, here to continue our discussion on esophageal cancer. I would like to switch gears a little and talk about Barrett's esophagus and how it can lead to cancer of the esophagus. So if you're ready, let's get started with a dose of medical inspiration. Barrett's esophagus is a precancerous condition arising in 10 to 20 percent of the patients with chronic GERD or chronic reflux of stomach contents up into the esophagus. People who develop Barrett's esophagus may have symptoms of heartburn, indigestion, difficulty swallowing solid foods, or nocturnal regurgitation that awakens them from sleep. Patients with Barrett's esophagus have an increased risk of developing esophageal adenocarcinoma, which is currently the most rapidly increasing cancer in the United States, one of the reasons I chose this topic for today. In Barrett's, the normal white lining of the esophagus has now been replaced by an abnormal red lining, which is called specialized intestinal metaplasia. Cancer arises slowly over time as cells go through a progression of genetic rearrangements that transform normal tissue to malignancy. In about 1% of Barrett's patients each year, the condition progresses to a type of cancer called esophageal adenocarcinoma. So just to review that, about 10 to 20% of people who have reflux, chronic reflux, will get Barrett's. And then about 1% of the people who have Barrett's will get esophageal adenocarcinoma. So that's the risk. The course of the disease can be monitored by directly looking into the esophagus using endoscopy. Endoscopy is a procedure in which a slender, flexible fiber optic tube, which is just really a fancy word for a camera, is inserted through the mouth into the esophagus, which then allows doctors to obtain small tissue samples or biopsies from the esophagus, and they do this at regular intervals and then examine them for malignant or cancerous growth. Based on the samples taken, a pathologist unravels the cellular differences that cause this small group of patients to develop cancer. Interestingly enough, to help out those with Barrett's esophagus nowadays, pathologists can use a technique called flow cytometry. By using flow cytometry, which illuminates chromosomes in the cell and permits them to be counted, Pathologists have now developed a method of monitoring cells from esophageal biopsies and sorting them based on their DNA content. This is really high-tech, cutting-edge technology. The cells with abnormal amounts can then be distinguished from their normal counterparts, allowing for much earlier detection of the progression to cancer. And remember, with all types of cancer, early detection is an excellent thing. Patients with Barrett's should undergo periodic surveillance with endoscopy, which makes it possible to measure the size of the affected area and to remove samples of esophageal tissue. This allows your doctor to see if any genetic abnormalities are present in cells from the affected area. So in this way, doctors can simultaneously evaluate the effect of size as well as any genetic instability, both of which could lead to esophageal cancer. I'm Dr. Sugar, and I would like to continue our discussion on esophageal cancer in part three of our series. In part three, I will discuss some treatment options for esophageal cancer, so make sure to watch. I'll see you there.